In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to an exciting new feature that has just come to Performance Max campaigns, and that is experiments. That's right, this was recently spotted on Twitter. I don't actually think Google have made an official announcement about it yet, at least not one that I have seen, uh, but this was spotted in the wild by people who posted it on Twitter. It's been picked up in the general industry news. Performance Max experiments have just rolled out. Now I've checked in our e-commerce accounts for my agency Big Fair, and we're seeing this live in most of our accounts now. So go and have a check in your account. It's probably there, but I do believe this is on an eventual slow rollout. These things normally get rolled out step by step across the globe. So if it's not in your account just yet, don't sweat. It's probably coming there soon, but have a look in there and it might already be in there. Now, what can we actually do with this new functionality and what is it all about? Uh, let me run you through it. So I've got one of our accounts over here. And uh, what we can see is I've clicked down to the Performance Max Campaigns filter here. And if you come to Campaign Experiments, you can now click this plus button to create a new experiment. Now, what is an experiment exactly? Well, an experiment is a feature that we've had in Google Ads for years now, and it's really useful for testing things because it allows us to set up a more scientific A-B split test between two different campaigns. And when you set it up as an A-B split test using the campaign experiments feature, it means it's going to assign a uh, measurable amount of your budget to the campaign experiment and to the control. So you can tell it to do 50% of the budget on the experiment and 50% of the budget on the control. Now, if, if you don't use a campaign experiment and you just run two campaigns next to each other and try to test them against each other, there's no guarantee that they'll spend whatever proportion of the budget you want them to spend. And there's no guarantee that the audience will be cycled evenly in an A-B split testing fashion between the two campaigns. This feature set allows you to do that. It allows you to specify the budget allocation for each side of the campaign experiment, and it does a more scientific A-B split test between your original campaign and the experiment. Now, why am I excited about this and what can we use this for? Now, it's early days. This feature just came out, and here at Big Fair, we're just starting to use it but I'll tell you what we're using it for currently. And in a future video, if you guys are up for it, let me know in the comments down below. But if you'd like to hear the results of our campaign experiments for Pmax, in a future video, let me know down below. But what we're using campaign experiments for right now, we've just launched a bunch of new tests for this, is we want to use this for split testing product titles. So what our methodology has been has been to uh, create a second campaign and then create duplicate item IDs for all the top products and to put those duplicate item IDs into a new campaign. And at first, they're just going to be pure duplicates. Now you can look back on my previous videos about the shopping dupes method. This is kind of tying in with that, but we duplicate the item IDs of our top products. We put it into a new campaign and then we run an AB test between the old campaign and the new campaign. Now there is a little annoying limitation here, which I'll cover in just a minute. But first we're literally just duping the item IDs putting an exact duplicate into a new campaign, and then running the two exact same campaigns side by side. This serves a purpose. When you duplicate the item IDs, it kind of resets the invisible quality score that is happening for that product. Duplicating the item ID makes Google think it's a new product, which gives us the ability to do things like change the title and put new keywords into the title and thus get more keywords into the title for that product. But the disadvantage of duping your item ID is that Google stores the performance data and information at the item ID level. You can kind of think of this like an invisible quality score for shopping. There's sort of an invisible quality score for shopping, for your shopping products, for your Pmax products, and it's stored at the item ID level. So first, we are duping the item ID and making an exact duplicate and then putting those exact duplicates into a second campaign. Then we're running a campaign experiment 
to do an even 50-50 budget split between the old and the new campaign. Now, these are duplicate campaigns at the moment, and the only reason we're running this budget split is to get conversion data onto the new item ID. We need to build up its invisible quality score so that it's not at a disadvantage to the original item ID. Now, we're going to run that. We've just started these campaign experiments, but we're going to run that for 14 to 30 days until the performance of the duplicated item ID is similar or equal to the performance of the original item ID. When that happens, then we can be somewhat sure that the invisible quality score on the duplicate item is equal to the invisible quality score of the original item. Now, when that phase is complete, that's when the fun stuff happens. And I haven't, we haven't got there yet. This is work still in progress. But the fun stuff is going to be, once the quality scores are equal, we change the title of the duplicated item and we test new keyword ideas. So, you know, let's say we've got a product which is a sleep mask and in our original product we might have a product title in Pmax that just focuses on like sleep mask related keywords but we might want to test some new keywords in that title like we might want to test something like night marks or nighttime sleeping mask something like that it's like a bit of a different set of keywords we want to test and the way we can do that now is with campaign experiments by duplicating the item ID first running an A-B test with exact duplicate item IDs to equal the, equalize the performance, and then change the titles in the duplicate campaign and run another test, A-B split test, but this time the items are going to have different titles, and then the campaign experiment results will tell us which of the titles actually performs better. So that's what we're using it for right now. You can also just use this to do a straight up test of Performance Max versus Standard Shopping. Maybe you want to run Standard Shopping or you want to run Performance Max, you want to switch to the campaign type you're not using, but you're not sure if it's going to perform better or worse. That's where Campaign Experiments comes in again, because you'll actually be able to scientifically split test this. So let's hop over back to my computer screen and I'll just give you a quick run through how to set these puppies up. Uh, so we're in Google Ads now, come down to Performance Max Campaigns, you come down to Campaign Experiments, you should see something here if this is enabled in your account. And then you go to Plus Box here for a new experiment. We want to run a Performance Max experiment now, unfortunately, test uplift of Performance Max, uh, this is not really available for e-commerce right now. If you click continue, you will see it says campaigns with a linked Merchant Center account are not supported. And of course, if we're running e-commerce ads, we're always going to have a linked Merchant Center account. That's how we run shopping ads, the shopping component of Performance Max. So just ignore this. This is not useful for us. That part is not useful for us as e-commerce advertisers. But what is useful is the second option, which was test versus standard shopping. Now, here's how you can test a Performance Max campaign versus a standard shopping campaign. And unfortunately, you can't test a Performance Max campaign versus another Performance Max campaign right now. So that title testing, that title testing process that we're trying out that I mentioned just now, we're actually having to do it with the originals in one campaign type and the duplicates and new titles in a different campaign type. So it's not gonna be a like for like test, but I do still think we're gonna get some interesting data out the back of this. Equally, you could just do this uh, as a straight up test, like duplicate the settings, but have one in standard shopping, one in Performance Max, and that will just let you see the difference in performance between standard shopping and Performance Max, and it will help you decide which type of campaign you want to use for your campaign. So once you've selected this test versus standard shopping campaign, let's just continue. And it's going to ask you to select a control campaign. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're on the select campaign screen. We can select the original uh, campaign that we want to use as our control. So let's just select this one here, our Australia campaign for this particular account. Uh, and then here's where you can decide the traffic split. So, you know, you can do 50, 50-50 uh, 50, 50, or 30-70 or 10-90. It only gives you those three options. So it doesn't it doesn't give you an infinite amount of options. You can't configure it to the exact percentage you want it to be, but this is enough to play around with and get a good idea of what's performing better. 
and then you can select your treatment campaign. That's the one that we're going to test against the control. So you can create new or select an existing. Let's select an existing uh, and we'll select this one here. Okay, and now at this point, we can just click the next button to go to the next screen. It then gives you uh, an option to name your campaign experiment. This is the name that you're gonna see popping up in the experiments tab on the left-hand side. You can check your settings here. Okay, great, that's the control 50%, that's performance max 50%. And then you click schedule and it will start running the uh, experiment on whatever date you put in here. Now, I'm not actually going to enable this because that was just a dummy one that I was setting up. Uh, but if we come over here to performance max experiments, you can see the ones that I set up previously and you can see uh, that the, compar the, the comparable campaigns is currently saying pending. Both of these are in progress or just launched. So these are new experiments, so we don't have much data for them yet. Data accrues. When we get the data, we're gonna be able to see the performance difference by just by clicking into the experiment and then reviewing the data in here. Um, now, I haven't actually seen what this looks like yet, but I'm assuming that once this experiment has been running a while, this window here will change and will give us a table to compare the results. And from that table, we'll be able to figure out which side of the experiment is working best for us. So I hope that was a useful and informative view uh, of campaign experiments for Performance Max for you. As I say, this is an exciting new feature that lets us just get a bit more scientific and get a bit more objective about figuring out things like, okay, is Performance Max actually better than standard shopping or is it the other way around? We're gonna get some more objective results for that. And it's also allowing us to do some cool stuff like what I've just explained to you. We're gonna be able to split test titles more scientifically with this. And and then I'm just thinking ahead here, after we've done our first phase of title testing, I think the next step for us at Big Flare with our e-commerce accounts that we're running is then going to be to start split testing images because those are two of the most important parts of your product feed that are the most worthy of split testing when it comes to shopping and performance max. So I hope this video was useful. Do subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you did find it useful. And until the next one, always be testing.